this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll explain how to calculate how often to do repeating increases or decreases in shaped items. In addition, I'll explain how to recalculate the shaping rate in a published pattern if you need to modify it for length or if your row gauge doesn't match the pattern's row gauge. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, you can use the chapter titles in the video timeline to find that particular section of the video or use the direct links down in the video description. So what I have here is a swatch that is simulating a sweater sleeve, the shaping of a sweater sleeve. It's a little bit curled in underneath at the edges here. So it starts out quite narrow at the bottom and ends up quite wide at the top as sleeves typically do. It is straight across. There's no little shaping for the sleeve cap and I have knit it flat, not in the round. Many sweaters are knit in the round, but many are knit flat. And I think it's a little easier to see the effects of the shaping when it's knit flat. So what I want to show you is how I went about uh, deciding how many stitches I needed at the base, how many at the top, and how I decided how frequently that I was going to do my increases so that it would come out even at the end. And it, this would end up being the exact length that I wanted. So I started by drawing a shape, basically a schematic for the sleeve. And the way sleeves typically work is that you have a cuff at the bottom and then you have this area where the shaping occurs, where you're working increases on both ends of the row. Uh, or if you are working in the round, you do one at the end of the round, one at the beginning of the round. When you're done with the shaping, typically, if you're work, this is if you're working bottom up, but it'll be the opposite if you're working top down. When you are done with the shaping, there's an area where you work even, it's called, or straight, which means without increasing or decreasing. So the shaping portion is done between two areas that are worked straight. So the shaping begins here and it ends here. So my idea was I wanted something that was five inches across the top and that was half that width at the bottom. So 2.5 inches here. Then I wanted, this is the ribbing portion right here. I wanted this to be about an inch and a half long. Uh, I wanted this portion right here to be uh, five inches long. And I wanted the total length of this sleeve to be seven and a half inches long. So if you work out the math here, then that would indicate that this portion right here would be one inch. Typically, when you're knitting in this direction, when you are done with the shaping, the instructions will tell you to then knit even or knit straight without decreasing or increasing until you have reached the total length that you want. If you are working in the opposite direction, you will typically have about an inch where you are not doing any decreases. And then you again have the shaping rate, um, the shaping uh, in a specific area. And then you might be working straight for a little bit before you switch to ribbing or you might switch to the ribbing right away. And again, you would work the ribbing until you achieve the total length that you needed for the entire sleeve. So that's how you start. You start with the, the actual measurements that you want to achieve and then you convert those into stitches. So you do that by using your stitch gauge. My gauge is five stitches per inch and I am getting seven rows per inch. The way that that translates into this two and a half inches is that that is equal to a 12, 0.5 stitches, which is obviously not possible. Um, and then up here, that is equal to 25 stitches. So this is the point where the designer has to then look at the stitch patterns that they're using and determine how many stitches that they actually do want to cast on. So if we look at my sweater cuff here, I'm using a Knit 2 Pearl 2 ribbing. And again, I'm knitting flat. So I want this to be symmetrical. I want it to be the same at both ends. 
Uh, so you would want it symmetrical if you weren't seaming it because you'd want the pattern to, to look even at both edges. In this case, because I'm knitting knit two, purl two ribbing, if I were going to seam this, I'd be eliminating one stitch at the selvage, at each selvage when I was seaming it. And when, and on, so either side of that seam, I'd have a full knit stitch, which would maintain the knit two, purl two ribbing across that seam line. So that's something I'm thinking about when I'm deciding what my cast on number is going to be. I don't necessarily try to get for example, exactly 12 or exactly 13. And in this case, I need a multiple of four plus two more because I want this extra uh, two stitches for the knitting. So rather than going with 12 or 13 stitches, I'm actually going to go with 14 because that will allow me to have a pretty close to two and a half inches, slightly more, and it will allow me to maintain my stitch pattern. So I'm gonna start with 14 stitches. Now, when I'm increasing, I'm increasing two at a time. So if I'm starting with an even number, that means I need an even number at the end. So 25 stitches isn't going to work. So I either need 24 or I need 26. So I went a little bit larger for the ribbing, so I'm going to go slightly larger for the top of the sleeve. So I'm gonna have 26 stitches. So I'm going from 14 stitches to 26 stitches. So I'm going to be adding 12 stitches altogether, but I'm going to be doing two stitches at a time. So I am going to have six rows with increases. Uh, so I need to actually increase six times. And again, I'm going to want to increase at the very beginning and at the very end. Now it's time to look at how many rows is it going to take me to work these five inches. Now, oftentimes in knitting, it doesn't matter how many rows we knit to do something because we're being told just to knit it to a specific length. So if you're working straight like the, the body of a sweater and you're just knitting it straight completely and you're not doing any increases or decreases, it really doesn't matter how many rows or rounds you're knitting because what's important is the total length that you're getting. But when you're doing shaping like this over a large, number of rows, many, many times over a large number of rows, you really need to calculate the number of rows that that is going to take using your row gauge and then figure out how you're going to space out those increases. So in my case, I want five inches. I want the shaped area to be five inches long and I'm getting seven rows per inch. So I want seven rows per inch times five inches is equal to 35 rows. So this is the total amount that the shaped area is going to be is 35 rows based on the row gauge that I'm getting. So we have to work these six increase rows. We have two increases on each of those increase rows. So six increase rows over a span of 35 rows. So there are a couple of issues when we are trying to calculate the frequency of this. And the first one is that you are not going to divide six into 35. In fact, what you're going to do is to divide five into 34. And that is because the first increase row is on row number one. And what you wanna do is evenly space the next five increase rows evenly from that first row so that you end up on row 35. So that means we eliminate row number one when we're doing this calculation. So what we really wanna do is divide five into 34. So that's the first uh, trick is that you are not dividing six into 35 rows, you're dividing five into 34 rows. Uh, the next issue is that often these aren't going to divide evenly. You're going to get some sort of a fractional number. And what you'll see in this case, if we divide five into 34, we get approximately every six rows, we're going to be doing an increase, but we're gonna have an extra four rows left over. So we have a remainder of four. If we are working in the round, 
the right side of the work is always facing us and we will always be working our shaping whether it's increases or decreases on the right side of the work. So that means that we can space our increases and decreases out over an odd number of rows if we need to. But typically when we are knitting flat, we want our increases to be on the right side of the work because it's just easier to track them. If you have to increase or decrease at a very fast rate, so you have to get many, many uh, increases or decreases done over a fairly short amount of, of space, sometimes you do need to do wrong side row uh, increases or decreases, but in something where the increases occur over a large number of rows, typically you're going to want in flat knitting to do them on the right side of the work. Now regardless of whether you are knitting flat or in the round, you won't always get, as I said, an even number of rounds that you can work every single time. You're gonna have some extra rounds remaining. And that's why you end up sometimes with two different uh, shaping rates. You'll be told to work uh, increases every six rows for a certain number of times and then it might tell you to work every uh, eight rows uh, for the rest of the increases. And that's because you can't always divide the number of increases evenly into the number of rows they need to occur in. So here we have, um, these numbers represent the actual uh, increase rows, the first increase row, the second, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And when we when we did our calculations that we needed to do them every six rows with the remainder of four rows, what we can see is that we would be doing um, the first one and then six rows, six rows, six rows, six rows, uh, like that. Um, and then we need to distribute these extra four rows. If you are working in the round, then you can uh, distribute these uh, four rows evenly amongst four of, uh, of these increase rows. So you can add an extra one here, 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 and here. So what this means is that on row one, you'd work your first increase, and then six rows later, you would work your second one, seven rows later, you'd work your third, seven rows later, your fourth, seven, your fifth, and seven, your sixth, and that last one would be on row 35. If you are working flat and you always want your increases to be on the right side of the work, uh, then you, again, you could space these out every six rows, and then you would distribute these extra four rows in sets of two. So you'd work the first increases, row one, and then six uh, rows later, six rows later, six rows later, and then eight rows later, eight rows later, in order to end up on the, uh, the, with the last increase on row 35. So this is a shaping rate calculator that I will link to down in the video description that will help you do the uh, calculation rate if you need that. So there are four places where you need to input uh, information. One is, and they're all highlighted in yellow. You put in your uh, your row gauge. So if we did the example that I already showed where we I had seven rows per inch and a shaping length of five inches, it's calculating the number of rows uh, that I need to do. But if you have a, a weird fractional uh, row gauge or a fractional number of inches, then this is going to round it to the nearest number of rows. So the next thing you input is the number of actual total number of increases. And in, in the case of the example I showed you, it was 12 increases that were going to be worked all together. And then you enter whether if you were doing one increase or decrease uh, per shaping row or if you're doing two. So if you're doing symmetrical increasing or decreasing like for a sleeve, then you'd put two in. But if you're only doing increase or, or decreasing on one edge of your fabric, then you would enter one. So what this is telling you is that we're excluding that first row so that we're going to be calculating the shaping five times over the remaining 34 rows. So this first section right here 
um, is for in the round shaping so you or if you want to do flat shaping where you are willing to do shaping on right side rows and wrong side rows which you might not be willing to do but it's available to you so it's telling you what the basic shaping rate will be in the round which is every six rounds and then there's that remainder of four so the shaping rates are right here every six rows one time and every seven rows four times now you'll notice this orange bit over here it says in general more frequent shaping is done at the narrower end say near the base of the cup uh, cuff and then less frequent at the top at the wider end so if you were doing bottom up at the cuff you would start with the every six rows and then shift to the every seven rows but if you were starting at the top of the sleeve you would start with the every seven rows four times and then shift to this every six this is just a convention it probably doesn't make that much difference so it doesn't really matter but just to be aware of that is typically how it's done for um, flat shaping where you're only doing it on even rows that the basic uh, shaping rate is again every six rows and that remainder is again every four rows but it's going to be divided up into two spots so you're going to be doing every six rows uh, five, three times and every eight rows two times so what i want to tell you now is how you can use this technique of calculating the shaping rate in order to modify a published pattern that you are knitting from so let's take the example again of the sleeve and let's say you know that this sleeve is 17 inches long uh, but you need it to be 15 inches long or you need it to be 19 inches long you need it to be it to be a different length than what it is um, so what you need to do is figure out what this shaping this the length is of the shaped portion and then either reduce that by two inches or increase it by two inches and so the way you figure that out is by looking at the shaping rate in the pattern and then dividing it by the row gauge so let me give you an example the highlighted area is the the size that i'm working on so this is telling me that I need to cast on 46 stitches and that after um, I've worked a certain straight amount, I'm supposed to increase uh, one stitch on each side and then every sixth row five times and every eighth row nine times. So I have the row one and then I have uh, every sixth row five times and every eighth row nine times. So this is 30 rows and this is 72 rows. So that's 102 rows plus this very first row. So I, that's 103 rows. So now I know how many rows long this shaped area is. So I take that 103 rows and I divide it by the row gauge of this pattern. So this particular pattern said I was supposed to have a row gauge of uh, 27 rows over four inches or 10 centimeters so that's 6.75 rows per inch and that tells me that this uh, whole length right here this shaped rate was 15.25 inches in length so I know that now and now I can either uh, add length I can add a couple extra inches if I want or I can uh, reduce a couple of inches and then I can use that shaping calculator with the new length that I want and uh, have it tell me how many rows um, I should be working instead. It'll recalculate the shaping rate for me. But it might not be that you need to add length. It, the problem could be that your row gauge is not matching what the pattern's row gauge is. And that's actually the issue that I had when I did knit this particular pattern. I knit this twice. The first time I had a row gauge of eight rows per inch, which means I had more rows per inch. That means I finished my shaping like way early here. And that would have meant that I would have had to work straight for like three inches or longer, which is really too much. You really just want the last 
inch, approximately inch to be straight. So that was far too soon. And I knit this a second time and I had a different row gauge again than the pattern or the row gauge I had with the first uh, time I knit it. I had eight and a half rows print, so I would have uh, been done even sooner. So in the in the case where I'm having more rows per inch, I'm going to be done with the shaping way earlier. It would would have been done way like this, and then then it would have gone straight up. The other problem is this: if you have fewer rows per inch than the pattern calls for. So if this pattern had called for eight rows per inch, but I was the one getting 6.75, I would have gotten the full length of the sweater uh, that I needed for the shaping area before I was done with the shaping. So I wouldn't have been able to get it done in time. So this is a, an area where you need to recalculate your shaping rate. So you need, again, to figure out what the pattern is originally calling for, the number of rows and how long that actually is. And then you can use the shaping calculator. You, you'll put in the actual length that you want if you really want the sleeve to be 17 inches, but you'll change the gauge, the row gauge, so that it will recalculate the shaping rate for you. The examples I demonstrated today were for the sleeves of a sweater, but this technique of calculating or recalculating the rate of shaping can be applied to any piece of fabric where the shaping will occur multiple times over the course of many rows. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below. If you have questions about a specific project you are working on, please ask those questions in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. There is a link to my group down in the video description as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.